up, guys? DaVinci Resolve 17. There is so much good stuff in here. It's mind-blowing. Almost crazy. And I'm sure you guys have already seen a lot of videos on it. Hopefully, you've even seen my video on it. And today, I wanted to take some time to jump into some of the features they added in Fairlight for working with your audio. Because if you guys are like me, love me some good audio, right? Gotta have good audio with our videos. So I haven't really seen many videos out there yet on the features added to Fairlight here in DaVinci Resolve 17. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. And in no particular order, I'm just gonna, gonna go through some of the big things that uh, I found interesting and that are pretty cool here in the Fairlight tab of DaVinci Resolve 17. So one of the first things I wanted to mention here is that they came up with a new audio engine for the Fairlight tab. So I guess behind the scenes, there's a new uh, engine that runs everything. And one of the cool things is that you can have up to 2000 tracks. Are you kidding me? 2,000 tracks? I mean, for my little YouTube stuff, I don't need more than a few, but I guess if you're making movies and you're doing all kinds of big high-end stuff, you're going to need all those tracks. So now you're going to have up to 2,000 tracks. Pretty crazy, but uh, that's pretty sweet, I guess, if you need all those tracks. So now let's just jump right onto the computer here, and in no particular order, we're going to go through some of these cool updates here in the Fairlight tab. All right, here we are in DaVinci Resolve in the Fairlight tab. I have a clip in my timeline. And this is actually the clip we've been using for our audio tutorial series we've been going through the last few weeks. So uh, if you haven't seen that little card above here, you should be able to click on that and check that out. So when you're working with your clips, you know, you can click on it and select it. And I usually use the selection mode tool here to kind of navigate around. But now in DaVinci Resolve 17, if you come over here and you select the edit selection mode tool, you're going to have all kinds of options that you can do with this tool when you're just hovering over the clip. And it all depends on where your cursor is on the clip. So you can come over and adjust your volume here. We've always had that. You can come over to the size of your clip and drag it in and out. You can come towards the bottom of the clip and grab it and move it around. You can come to the top of the clip and fade it in or fade it out. You can even come in here and click and hold and drag and you're selecting a portion of your clip. So you can select a range like that, super easy and quick. And if you want to deselect your range, you can just click outside of your clip somewhere. And I think it's just really cool that they added so many different things that you can do with this one tool. So you don't have to constantly switch back and forth between tools. So I'm really liking that. And uh, I think this uh, tool right here, the edit selection mode tool is going to be my go-to tool here in the Fairlight tab for doing anything with my clips and making adjustments. I can also just hover over my uh, volume line here and hold your option or alt key, click, and it's going to add a keyframe for you. So that's pretty cool. So the next awesome tool here in DaVinci Resolve 17 in the Fairlight tab that I wanted to mention is soloing your clip. So we've always had the option over here that you could click on this button and solo your clip, which means it'll play just the clip that has this solo button checked on. Or if you have multiple clips soloed, it'll play multiple clips. But that way you don't have to go through and mute all the rest of your tracks if you just want to hear one particular track. Well, now if you come over to your clip and you hold Shift and Command or Control on PC, and then you click your left mouse button, hold it down and drag your mouse, it's gonna automatically solo that clip for you. Tab here, we're gonna be doing everything from setting our... So that is pretty sweet, because you don't even have to click the solo button, you just hold Shift and Command or Control on PC, and you see we have our little solo light lit up over there. And if I let off my mouse button, it goes away. So that's pretty sweet. It's a great feature that they added here in DaVinci Resolve 17. So another interesting feature they added here in DaVinci Resolve 17 is the ability to zoom in or zoom out of your waveforms. So I thought this was kind of interesting because you kind of have those options right here using this slider. But I guess if you wanted to zoom in on the actual waveform, you can do that now. So if you hold your shift and option or alt on PC and roll your middle mouse wheel in, you can see it makes those waveforms bigger. Now, I'm not really sure why you would use this because it can kind of be deceiving on like where your audio levels are. You know, if you're basing stuff on how big that waveform is, which I've done that in the past, you know, kind of eyeball different clips to get the same height on the waveforms to kind of get them close as far as their levels are concerned. So, but if you're zooming in on the actual waveforms, that could be a little confusing. So I'm not hundred percent sure on the purpose of it, although it's cool that you can do it. Um, but hey, just something I wanted to throw out there and make you guys aware of. All right, jumping back into Fairlight here, the inspector also has some updates similar to how it is in the edit tab and some of the other tabs. Now, when you look in the inspector here, you've got the different, um, sections at the top here, you've got video, audio, and then if you had any effects or transitions on there, you could make some adjustments there. For example, if I just grab an effect and I throw it on my clip here, close that out of the way, I'm gonna select my clip, go to the inspector, and now I can go to the effects and look, you can adjust all of your parameters 
right here in the inspector as opposed to having to open up uh, the you know window for the specific effect that you might have put on your clip. So that's kind of cool. All right, so the next thing that's pretty cool that you can do here now in the Fairlight tab is link up audio clips. Now you couldn't do that before, but now you can do it. So let me show you how to do it here. So I'm just gonna take my clip here. I'm gonna select it and I'm gonna copy it by holding my option or alt and just dragging it down into another track. And let's say I had two different clips here and I want to link them up together. Well, I can just select both clips, right click and right here we can link clips. And now they should be linked up together. And if I try and move them together here, let's say they move together. And just like in the edit page, if I uncheck the little link icon there, then I can come in and move them individually, yet they're still linked together. So that's kind of cool. You can link up your audio clips here. The next thing I want to show you is renaming tracks. Let's check it out. So you used to be able to rename your tracks right here. Just double click. You can still do that. Change it here. We want to call it Yeti. But now you can come on over to your mixer. And if you got a lot of tracks, this comes in handy sometimes because, you know, I may forget to label a track. You can just double click on the name here and name it whatever you want. So there we go. Music. So that's pretty sweet. I like that you can rename your tracks right here in the mixer instead of only being able to rename tracks over here on the left. Grabbing a quick sip of Joe here. Moving on, we're going to go to loudness levels. And they did make an adjustment here to how you can view your loudness levels. And if you don't know what loudness levels are, link to a video up here. Go check that out. It's going to tell you everything you need to know about making sure that the loudness levels of your video are good to go. So let's jump back into Resolve and we're going to talk about some loudness. All right, so when it comes to loudness, we're going to set our levels for this project to minus 14 LUFs because that's what you can use for YouTube. And again, I just want to see my graph. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this guy. We're going to turn on our loudness levels. Make sure our main bus is on. History, loudness on. Loudness history. Sometimes I read things backwards. And I'm just going to play through the clip here. I did mute it so we don't have to actually listen to it. So when we're looking at our graph here, we see zero. Now zero represents minus 14 LUFs. It's a little confusing. We set minus 14 LUFs as our target, but it comes up as zero on uh, our scale here on the bottom of the screen. And looking back up here at the loudest meters, it's also got a zero here, which represents our minus 14 LUFs. So that could be kind of confusing because it's like a relative scale. You know, whatever your, your uh, limit is or your levels that you want to meet, that's what zero equals. For example, if you want a minus 23, then zero is going to equal minus 23. It depends on how you set it in your project settings. Anyway, I don't want to get too deep into it, but basically you have a relative scale like that, or you can change it now to an absolute scale. And what that means is that you change it so minus 14 LUFs shows as minus 14 LUFs. You don't have, you know, zero equaling minus 14. So let's check this out. So if I come up here and look in my loudness meter area, we have zero right here, and that represents our minus 14 LUFs right now. But if I click on the three dots here and come down, we have absolute scale. And if I click on that, now this is going to show me the absolute value for my loudness. So at the top of my meters here is that minus 14, which is what I set in this particular project. And if also, if I come down here and look at my graph, that also changed too. So at the very top of my graph is my minus 14 LUFs. I'm just going to close the index. Let's come back to the beginning, play through here. And now we can see how far below that minus 14 we are. You can see we're a little low there. And if we come up on our meters up here, you can see that we're not quite meeting that minus 14 LUFs. So let's just open our mixer. I'm going to boost the main bus up here, just for example's sake. We're going to play through and see if that helps. See, we can see it rising up now. And if we adjusted all our levels properly and everything, we would be a lot closer to this minus 14 LUFs. But for now, this is just an example and just to kind of get you the idea of what's happening here. So that's pretty sweet. You can see the actual levels that you set for your LUFs. So if you're interested in that, you can change it to the absolute scale. So you can see it minus 14 LUFs or whatever your setting is. Um, I don't know. Some of us are used to the zero anyway, but hey, it's kind of cool that you can change that. So I like that. And another cool feature here when you are dealing with loudness is that you can measure the offline loudness levels is what they're calling it. So let's jump back over here and check this out. So you can go to any clip in your timeline. You can just click on it, right click, and come on up to analyze audio levels. You can open that up and you can select one of these options, um, but basically click analyze and it's gonna go ahead and analyze that clip for you. So it's gonna tell you what the loudness is of your clip. And it's also gonna give you the true peak level of that clip in decibels. So good to know, kind of interesting, um, you know, just a quick way that you can check a specific clip to see where the loudness levels lie for that specific clip. And I'm not sure if you select more than one clip, if uh, it all gets added up in that little analyzer there and it gives you, you know, the levels for all those clips. I'm not sure, but uh, it's worth a try. You can give it a try. So that's kind of cool. 
Uh, if you're interested in a cool Focus Cub or a Focus shirt, definitely check out down below the video. Anyway, moving on. The next thing we're going to talk about is transients. And I got to be honest, I didn't know what a transient was when I first saw that this feature was added. What it, but what a transient is, is any peaks or uh, like beginning parts of a word or any abrupt high uh, changes in your audio clips. Um, and a lot of times it's when you're looking at the waveforms, where you have any spikes or taller parts of that waveform. So that's kind of what a transient is. Uh, I'll throw a definition up here on the screen just to make sure I'm getting it right. So let's jump into Resolve. I'm going to show you exactly how you can have DaVinci Resolve mark all those transients for you. All right, so when we're looking at our clip here, we want to find out where all those transients are, which are those kind of beginning of words and peaks and things. And that's just going to help us be able to select ranges or line things up a little bit easier and quicker. So in order to turn on the transient detection, come on up to this little icon right here. Go ahead and click on that. And then you come on over to your track and right here you have transient detection. Go ahead and click that. It's going to take a second or two to run its little analyzing. And now you can see all these little lines on our clip here. Let me see if I can zoom in a little bit. So they're real faint. Hopefully you can see them uh, through the YouTube video here. But basically it puts a line at every point where either a word starts or there's some kind of abrupt change in your audio. So that's pretty cool because it can just really help you locate things better. It can help you line things up better. Uh, if you're lining up sound effects or maybe, you know, you have a voiceover that you're trying to line up with, um, you know, a rough edit from another camera or something. It, it's pretty sweet. I mean, I think this can come in really handy. And not only is it good for audio and speaking, but let's say you've got a, a music track in there and you need help finding the beat. You know, maybe you're having a little trouble. You run this transient detection and it's going to give you where all those beats are. I mean, you're still going to have to listen to it. It's not going to be just the beats, but it's going to give you a good guide of where uh, those beats are. And then you can go through and throw a marker on there for just the ones that are the beats or whatever. And then, you know, line up things like that. So that's pretty sweet. I'm going to have to try that out on a music clip and see how that works out. Oh, and you can actually just right click on the clips as well and enable those transients so you can see where all those breaks are. So keep that in mind. You can either right click or click on the icon that is on the left hand side of the track there. So the next thing I want to talk about is a new effect that we got here in the effects panel and it's called the surround analyzer. So let's go bring it up and I'll show you what it looks like. So if we come on over to our effects, you've got a few ways you can access them. You can either click right here and go through the menu this way or if you'd like, you can come on up to the effects library and we have a new view, a new way that everything looks over here. This is pretty sweet. It's just a nice way to look at everything. So if I come on down to the bottom, we've got surround analyzer. So I'm just going to go ahead and drag this onto my track and you can see it brings up a little diagram that looks like this. Now, as I play through my clip here, it's going to show us where the audio is going. Let's just play through my clip here. Again, I have the clip muted so you guys don't have to worry about hearing it. But if I look here, look at that. It's going towards the center, center channel there, a little bit to the right and left. And it's just kind of cool. It shows you where the sound is going. So if you're working on some surround sound or something like that, maybe this is a tool you could bring up that would help you just see where the sound is going. So kind of cool right there. So the last thing I wanted to mention here is that DaVinci Resolve 17 has a whole new bus setup. And if you remember what the buses were like in the previous version, you had your main out, you had subgroups that you could make, and you had auxiliary tracks. Well, now the buses are a lot more flexible and you can have a lot more of them and reroute things to different ways. So now you can link buses to buses. You can link tracks to buses, tr buses to tracks. You can really just move things all over and make, you know, more organized groups out of pretty much anything and do it however you want. So let's jump over here and I'm going to show you what that looks like. So to get into the buses here in DaVinci Resolve 17, you want to come up to the Fairlight menu and come down to bus format. So under bus format here now, it's just, you can just add a bus and you can have as many buses as you want, I think. Um, I don't know if there's a limit to them. You can have them be, you know, all kinds of different uh, formats, mono, stereo, 5.1, whatever you might need. And you can link things in a lot of different ways. So for example, we've just made six buses here. I'm going to hit OK. And then I'm going to come back to the Fairlight menu and come to bus assign. So now I can quickly come in here and select any one of my buses and assign any track or a bus to another bus. Um, why might you use this? Well, let's say you've got, uh, I don't know, five different vocals. Maybe you're, I don't know, doing a podcast or something that you're filming. You've got five different vocals. So you adjust everybody individually. You got all their levels set good, but now you want to raise and lower them as a group. Well, instead of individually grabbing, you know, each person's, you know, fader or whatever and boosting their levels, you put them all together in one bus and then you can just make adjustments to that particular bus. 
You don't have to do all the individual channels. You just do the bus. So that's kind of the situation where you might want to group things together. Maybe you've got multiple sound effects. You want to, they're on different tracks, but you want to group them all together. You can do that using a bus. When it comes to the buses, the other thing I wanted to mention is that now you can actually see your side chain over here in the bus outputs. So if you come up to dynamics, you click on there and let's say I've got my compressor on and I want to send out this signal so that I can do some audio ducking on another channel. Now over on the side here, we have our side chain meter. And if I come back, I'm going to close this and come back down to my mixer. You can see we actually can see our side chain in our track now under the bus outputs. So that's kind of cool. And you've got the ability to turn it on and off. So that's something that we didn't have before. And if I even open up the mixer some more, you can see we've got our side chain over here. So that's kind of cool that you can see it in there. Whereas before we didn't have an option to see that. So the real advantage here is just being able to send whatever you want wherever you want. You're kind of limited on how you could do that and uh, how many different, you know, buses or groups that you had in the previous versions of DaVinci Resolve, but now you've got a lot more options. So, I mean, if you're just, you know, like me, small time YouTuber, probably not going to use something like that too much. Although there are times when I do, you know, work with the buses or if you're making like a yeah, music video or I'm filming my church group, something like that, then I might be using some of the more of the buses and kind of rerouting stuff. But for the most part, um, I just, you know, keep it with the basics. So you may not have a need for it, but if you do, it's nice to have the options to really move stuff around and do whatever you want with it. All right, so that's about all the uh, updates here that I'm going to be talking about. A lot of great stuff here in DaVinci Resolve 17, not only in Fairlight, but in the whole program. It's pretty sick. So anyway, you want to see some more audio videos, check up here and uh, maybe see what YouTube recommends down there. If you like the video, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the next video. Peace.